there preaching on, on Jesus and his works and his miracles while he was here on this earth, uh, his ministry. Uh, Jesus didn't just come and die. You know, he didn't, was not just born of a uh, virgin and die on the cross of Calvary and pay my sin debt, but while he was here, he was in ministry. Uh, he started his ministry around the age of 30 years old, and he continued. Now, I say he started. That's his public ministry. Christ was busy all the time of his life. But his public ministry that we have record of begins when he was about 30 years old and continues until his dying hour. Uh, remember on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, he told the thief on the cross, uh, you know, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So from his beginning until his end, uh, he truly had a ministry, but we learned uh, about the last three years of his life, we learned that in the gospel. And uh, this message this morning, I hope will be a blessing and be a help to you. And we entitle our message today, The Savior in the Storm. The Savior in the Storm. Mark chapter number 4, I'll begin reading with verse number 35, and we'll go as the Lord leads us today. Mark chapter number 4 and verse number 35. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do bless you again for this opportunity. God, forgive me of my sins, my failures. God, I present myself to thee. God, please use me. God, this morning, I pray, God, that you would help, uh, Lord, us to rightly divide the word of truth and to present a message, God, today. Lord, that is full of the Spirit of God. Lord, I pray that you, Lord, would move uh, this old flesh out of the way. And I pray the Spirit of God, Lord, would do a work here. Speak through me, I pray, God, that thy will be done. Help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but all that we would say would be to the glory of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We find this story about Jesus still in the storm. Now, this is not a long story. Uh, this is a, we find it in, in Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke, uh, we find this story. John does not record this. But we find this story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And, and the story in, either, in any occasion is not a long story. But it has a very powerful meaning. And we learn a lot about the life of Christ in this, in this particular story. Now in verse 35 we read these words. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, uh, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now remember that. Uh, the, uh, Mark is the only one that records this part of the other little ships. So remember that. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? We see in these verses the the, as Jesus beforehand, he was preaching in Galilee in the book of uh, Luke chapter uh, number 8, verse number 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him. Now that's previous uh, to what he's doing. That's previous to him being on the ship. And as he, as he boarded that ship, Jesus had been in Galilee and he had been preaching. Now you remember who Jesus is. He is God in the flesh and, and he is as much God as he is man. Now God was fully man, yet he was fully God. Jesus in the flesh had a body uh, like I have, yet it was perfect. But he had a body. He, had, uh, he suffered as we suffer physically as far as fatigue goes and as far as tired goes. We did uh, go this week down uh, to a place where we hunt. And the landowner down there needed some help in posting some property. And so the, the idea of posting has come a long way since we used to nail uh, signs on trees. Now one would go along, uh, the owner would go along with a, uh, you know, with a uh, cutting knife and he would cut the tree bark 
And then two other people would come along and we would paint it. We would paint it with purple or paint it with yellow depending on the marker. And we did that over, 200, over 244 acres, the perimeter that we posted. Now this is one preacher that when he got through picking one foot up and putting it down behind the other was getting difficult. It was tiring. I was fatigued. I was sore. And I came home and got home and, and went to bed and, and, and rested because I was tired. Physically, I was tired. Also, sometimes we not only get physically tired, but we get mentally tired. How many of you have ever suffered mental fatigue besides myself? I mean, you get tired. Your mind gets tired. You need a rest. You need a break. And we have to do that from time to time. We have to rest our mind. And Christ, he, he suffered also that way. He, no doubt the burdens of, of that, that came upon him, him being man, that sometimes he became fatigued and he became tired and he became weary. And this was the case in this story. He had been preaching and he was, he was always busy about the, the uh, father's business. You read previous to this, all the miracles that he had done. And he's a miracle working God. He's still not... He still not stopped that part of being God. He still works miracles. Amen. Every time someone is born into the family of God, it's a miracle. Every time someone gets well from a disease or sickness, it's a miracle. And every day we go by without the devil being able to take us out, it's a miracle. God still does miracles today. But he had been doing these things and been uh, created, you know, doing work and miracles, and he was tired and weary. And the multitudes had gathered on the shore at the end of the day to hear him. He had been listening, you know, he had been speaking to him, preaching to him. And so the multitudes were following him. Many of them out of curiosity, many of them because they wanted to hear his teaching. But they, the multitudes followed him. And it came to the end of the day, and he said, let's go out on the ship. So he was, when, when the time come that he began to sail, he was already on that boat. And one of the other Gospels tell us that he was on the boat and he had been ministering from the boat. His pulpit was that boat that he was on. Why? Because they had gathered so close to him, he had to get out where he could get away from the crowd. So he was ministering from that boat. Now, as he was uh, began to preach, he, what could he do? It come time that he was over with. The day was about over. And it come time for all that to end. So he couldn't go back on, on shore. The, the crowd would have have thronged him, and he, he just could have gotten no rest. And so he said, let's go out on the boat. So <coughs> we read to you. So they, they sent the multitude away, and they took him even as he was in the ship. See, he, he was already in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. What were those other little ships? And I began to think on that. What was those other little ships? Because Mark, thinks it important through the Holy Spirit of God, thinks it important through Mark to tell us they were other little ships. <coughs> I believe that those other little ships were people that wanted to hear more. And so there was others that had little boats around there. And they said, well, he's going out in a boat. Let's go with him. There were faithful followers to follow Jesus all the time. Now, the others went away, had no choice. Maybe they didn't have a boat. Maybe they wanted to, but they could, they, it was not possible for them to do so. But those that could got out there in that boat, and they followed Jesus. They were out there. When everything I'm about to preach to you, we sometimes forget there was other little boats out there too. We sometimes forget that not only Jesus went in the ship in the storm, but there was other little boats out there also. So those other little ships are, are, were... Uh, there with him and, and uh, the reason for him not only to, to get away from the crowd so to speak he wanted rest he wanted some physical rest he was exhausted but that wasn't the only reason you read on down in the next chapter hallelujah on the other side of the, of the uh, Sea of Galilee was a place where there was a man that was full of the devil the gathering, the gathering, the man of the gathering. And Jesus knew that, and so in order to get there, he had to go to the other side. And that was his mission. He said, let us go, and then we'll go to the other side, and, and uh, I've got some business to take care of that. Remember when he went by the woman of Samaria, 
What did he say? I must needs go through Samaria. Now he doesn't say it here, but I believe the same meaning is true. He must needs go across the Sea of Galilee because there was a seeking soul over there. None of these others maybe could go. But Jesus could. I'll tell you something, friend. There's places around this world that I'll never travel. There's places that I'll never preach. But somebody's going. And I can have a part in that through missions. I can, I can help send someone else to go do something I can't do through missions. Now, friend, I'll tell you today, Jesus had a mission. And those others that wouldn't go or couldn't go, but Jesus knew that there was somebody there that needed him. So he said, let's get in the boat and let's go in the boat. And I've got to go to the other side that I might uh, do a work, do a ministry work there. So... Those other ships that were with him, they had nothing else to do but to follow along. Now, Jesus was weary. We see that, the, that he found him a place in the hinder part of the ship and lay down and went to sleep. How many of you ever been so tired that you could sleep on anything anywhere? Uh, I've been that way and done that. I mean, driving a car ain't no problem for me to go to sleep if I'm tired enough. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's a dangerous thing to do. So if that goes to happen, I pull off and, and uh, let my wife drive. And then the thing about that is I never can sleep when she's driving. And you men know what I'm talking about. All the ladies are frowning at me. I'm just telling you, that's the way us men are geared up. <coughs> Some of you shaking your head. Bless your heart if you can do that, men. I, I, you have to tell me how you do it. Uh, but, you know, my wife has no trouble when I'm driving the car sleeping. I mean, I, I, we can drive off down the road going somewhere and, and uh, 10 minutes later I look over there she's got her pillow curled up on the side and she's knocked out. I mean, she's sleeping. And then that makes me think, man, I'd like to be doing that. If I'm not careful, I'll be doing that. I'll be wanting to doze off. So I pull over somewhere and, and not drive while I'm sleepy. I've got a little better sense than that, I think, sometimes. But anyway, he was tired and he was sleepy and he needed to journey. Now, he's on a boat. Uh, I've been out on several boats. I've been out uh, deep sea fishing for a few times, and I don't know that I could sleep on that boat. I mean, the way it churns and tosses, and I don't know if I could. I guess if I was tired enough, I could. But Jesus was so tired that he fell asleep, found a pillow, and fell asleep in the hinder part of the ship, and he's sleeping. Now, the sailors that are with him, the disciples that are with him, uh, they're minding their business. They're sailing the boat. Jesus is asleep. Now I wonder what that conversation might have been like around those disciples. The Lord is tired. The Lord is tired. The Lord is resting. And maybe that's the conversation. And then comes the storm. The storm came down off of those mountains around the Sea of Galilee. And if you've been there, you, if, if you've not, let me describe it to you. The Sea of Galilee is, a, is, a, is really a lake, uh, and it's a, it's a huge body of water, but you wouldn't think that it could get as rough as it does, simply because it's not an ocean. Uh, but those being warm and humid down around the Sea of Galilee, that mountain there from Mount Hermon and those mountains around there uh, sometimes come pouring off of there in a draft would bring those cold air down into that hot air and what you get is a storm and a, a terrible storm. Some say this storm was more severe than many others that they had been in even to the point of being tornado-like winds. But Jesus was asleep and the storm came on and it was a sudden storm. And on the Sea of Galilee, storms can come up suddenly. I was there a few years back and uh, one thing we were going to do was get on the Sea of Galilee and we were going to sail from this point to this point to this point and instead of driving the bus all the way around the lake we were going to go to those points that, that we were going to see by boat. That's going to be an interesting thing. I was looking forward to that. Well, we got out on the boat and the waters were a little choppy and we got out a little ways. The sails were up, you know, and, and we were doing pretty good and then it got rough. And I mean, it got rough. The waves were, you know... The swells were probably four or five foot high, and that little old boat out there was a tossing and a turning, and, and uh, you know, people were falling out of their chairs, and I was hanging on for dear life, and I thought, man, this is going to be fun. Now, people also were getting sick. I don't get seasick 
that's, but they were. And so finally we got out there and, and uh, we had done just about all that they could possibly do to keep that you know, boat floating, and they did a good job and all of that. We weren't in no danger. But he said, we're going to have to pull to shore, and we're going to have to go by bus. It's too rough out here to do this. Now, if it was worse than that, Jesus was sleeping and the men were frightened because the storm came. So the storm came, the disciples were frightened even though Jesus was there. Now, they, these disciples had saw the miracles that Jesus had done. They would saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead. Uh, they had saw him uh, you know, bring the blind their sight and cause the deaf to hear. And Jesus, that same God, was right there with them. But he was asleep. And they were afraid. They were afraid. Even though Christ was there, they were afraid and they were fearful. So as they cry out to him, Lord, we're going to perish in this storm. You're sleeping. Will you do something? Will you help us? God was right there. He hadn't went anywhere. And so Jesus says, <coughs> He arose. He got up off of his pillow. He arose and rebuked the wind and the one that made the heavens and the earth, the same voice that spoke men into existence, that created the heavens and the earth, that in seven day, or six days he created the heavens and the earth. On the seventh day, is this same voice of God rose up and spoke, and the winds and the seas obeyed him. He said, he said peace, be still. Now, when he said, peace, be still, we always relate that to him calming the storm, to him calming the sea. But I believe in the same in the same manner, when he said, peace, be still, I believe he was talking to those disciples. It's all right. Everything's okay. We're, I'm in the boat with you. I'm where you're at. I'm, I'm going through the same thing you're going through. And it's uh, going to be okay. So he says, peace, be still. And the wind, he didn't say it calmed down. The wind, He said the wind ceased. Now, if you've ever been out on, a, on even the ocean, I've seen the ocean where the no wind was blowing and it. it really looked like it was no waves. You know, there was a little one, but it was just flat. I've been out on the lake before, and, and you know, when there's no wind, and it was just it was just a perfect peace, a perfect calm. So that's what happened on the Sea of Galilee uh, that night. That's what happened. The, the sea lay down flat because Jesus said, Peace, be still. And not only were there what did there become peace in those disciples' hearts. But there the sea became at peace and it laid down under his instruction and under the authority the storm had to cease. Amen. Now if you can go along with me here, you read between the lines and you see where I'm going. When the storm in our life so rages and the Lord and we cry out to Jesus and he says, peace be still, that very authority of the word of God, amen, the devil has to go and leave you alone and the storm has to cease in your life. And he said, Peace, be still. Now what happened? He said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He said, I'm with you. I'm right here with you. Even though the storm's going on, I'm right here with you. Why do you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and sea obey him. What manner of man is this? What manner of man could calm the sea? What manner of man right here in this storm could calm and the wind and the sea, they obey him? And let me say to you today, the Savior in the storm, we see these things. And that was my introduction. I'll give you about three or four things real quickly and we'll be done. The Savior in the storm is this. We see that the storm was a sudden storm. As we described to you early, all of a sudden it was calm and, and the, when they left it was calm and the sailing was good. But suddenly there came a storm upon the sea. Sometimes, my friend, things are going well for you and I. Sometimes things go along real good and we think everything's perfect and, and it seems like 
you know, the devil's not rocking the boat even in the church sometimes. Listen, when, we're, when it's that way, you can expect something to happen. Amen. You can expect the devil to try to cause a storm in your life. And sometimes that's what I'd see going in. I'm fe- sometimes I'm fearful because, you know, uh, I know something's going to happen that the devil brings a storm in my life and a struggle in my life. Sometimes it happens in the church. But guess what? Jesus can say, peace, be still. <coughs> now the storm was sudden. It was unexpected. How many of you face storms when you just expected it to happen? We don't ever expect that, do we? Now today, with our weather, we've got weather forecasters that they can be right or they can be wrong. But this last time, they happened to hit it perfect. It seemed like everything fell in place for them, so you give them kudos. But sometimes they'll predict the storm and it never happens. It'll go another direction or something. But we're, it's never expected. And sometimes we get, you know, I've woke up, went to bed before no snow in the forecast and wake up before inch snow on the ground. Where'd that come from? It was unexpected. Now listen, the storm in your life sometimes is an unexpected storm. Sometimes things will happen. You don't expect that to happen. We were, as we were going down the road the other day, uh, me and the boss man, I was riding with him, and uh, we weren't expecting anything to go wrong. You know, you don't ever expect that. And so we got almost about halfway uh, to Raleigh, and we, something started sounding funny, and, and uh, pulled off the side of the road, and sure enough, we'd had a flat tire. And he got it off the road, and that was unexpected. We didn't expect to have a flat tire. I didn't go that day saying, Boss man, I expect we're going to have a flat tire today. Better make sure the spare's pumped up. You know, better make sure you got a spare and it's pumped up because I'm expecting a flat today. Now, do you all ever do that? Do you ever go out expecting to have a flat tire? Anybody? Now, if you do, you know better to start with because you know what's, what's wrong with the tire to start with. So, sure enough, we got out and, and uh, yep, it's flat, all right. And I said, yep, it ruined that tire, too. You couldn't get off the road quick enough, then it ruined the tire. And it had, a, it had a hole in the bottom of it. He'd run over something or whatever had happened. Uh, but he got the jack out and got everything together and looked down there, there's a spare tire there, got it down. It did have air in it. You all expected to tell me. You expected me to make the storm worse. Tell you it didn't have no air in it, but it was, everything was fine. We changed it, went on down the road. But I was in the car, with, I, I said, boss man, I said, <clears throat> now we didn't plan on that. But I said, Lord, may have stopped us right here for a reason to let some traffic get out of our way to keep us from getting killed down on the highway somewhere. I said, I don't know why. And he, he, said, he began to think about that. And he said, yeah. He said, that could very, piece of, that could very well be right. And so the, even though that was a small thing, it was unexpected. The storms, that, and that wasn't a storm either, by the way. That was, just, that was just an incident that occurred. But if you're facing a real storm, you're not expecting it. Now, I wasn't expecting what happened the other night with the prayer request that I asked you about. I wasn't expecting that. But guess what? I knew who to call on when the storm came. Amen. I knew, I knew who to ask for prayer. Amen. I knew who to talk to. And I knew, knew who to call upon to help me pray. And guess what? That storm was quick and that storm was fast. But that storm terrified my life. But thank God I'm glad for a church and a pray and to help me pray. And I'm glad you all helped me with the storm. Amen. The storms in your life are unexpected storms. But Jesus is there in the storm. The storms in your life, many times you're unprepared for. You're not ready for it when it comes along. But just remember, Jesus is there with you in the storm. Even though it's unexpected, even though you're unprepared, and even though sometimes there'll be unusual storms. Now see, the devil knows how to, the devil knows how to affect us. He knows how to cause us to, to uh, uh, kind of lose our, maybe lose our faith for a little while or cause us to want to give up or cause us to want to quit because the storms sometimes are unusual. And the devil always knows which way to hit you. He knows what buttons to punch. Now there's things that the devil don't bother me with much because it doesn't do him any good. It doesn't help him in trying to defeat me if he does certain things because he's tried it and it hadn't worked. So he's always got some nasty trick up his sleeve. That's why he's a devil. 
He's always got some nasty little trick up his sleeve that he'll bring about and bring upon you to try to cause you to lose your faith and lose your hope and get discouraged and quit on God. Now, I believe that was what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples here. This storm was unexpected. This storm was you were unprepared for. Now, how do I know they're unprepared for? Well, they, got, they were on the boat, and they didn't go back to get any provision for a storm, so they were unprepared. But Jesus knew what was going to take place, and it was an unusual storm that came upon them. See, they'd been out in many storms, and it had never frightened them before. But this storm was terrible enough for them to frighten them. And, and, and they would call upon Jesus. So the, your storm may be that you're going through today. It may have been somebody is facing something, amen, that maybe only you and God know about today. I'll tell you something. You and God know about it. That's all it has to know about it. And He will help you in your storm. Amen. He will help you in your storm. Not only was that storm uh, sudden, but, it, but we see the severity of the storm. It was like no other that they had ever seen. They, as I said a minute ago, they had been through many storms, but nothing like this one. Nothing to terrify them to the place where they thought that they were going to perish. The boat had become full of water, and no doubt they had faced terrible storms, but nothing like this one. Friend, I'm telling you, your storms may come and they may go, but look, when you face one storm and God helps you in it, remember there's another coming your way. There's never a time when you're not going to face hardship. There will never be a time as a believer when you don't face storms. But I thank God today God was with me in the last round. Hallelujah, He'll be with me in the next. Amen. I faced the storm with the Lord Jesus Christ the last round. Thank God, amen, I know He's going to be there the next time. When a storm comes in my life, there's a God in heaven, there's a Jesus that will look around and say, Peace be still, amen. That's the kind of God that I've got. That's the kind of God that I serve. One that when my storms are raging in my life, there's God that can help me. Amen. I can walk away with a smile because God helped me in the storm. Well, that storm being an unusual storm and being a, uh, uh, being a storm of uh, proportions they had never seen was very severe. And then we see in their storm that the severity of that storm, it caused them that their efforts were futile. Their efforts were useless. Uh, no doubt before they woke Jesus up, they tried to bail out. They tried to let the sails down and let the ship go and just let it ride it out. And no, but all their efforts were, futile, were, were, were uh, uh, fruitless. All their efforts. Efforts were useless in that time of the storm. I'll tell you something. Sometimes we face a storm and all God wants us to do is call out for help. How many of you ever try to fight your own battles? I've been bad for that. I've been bad sometimes to fight my own battles and try to do it without God. I'm no match for the devil. I'm no match for Satan. He always wins when I try to fight my own battles. When I'm facing hard, you know, troubles and I try to, well, I can fix this. It's always much better when I realize my efforts are futile. My efforts are useless. And I say, Lord, I can't do it. God, I can't do it. You've got to handle this for me. Guess what will happen? Jesus will stand up and say, peace be still. And though the storm may go on for a while around you, thank God I'm glad for the peace even in the midst of the storm. Peace be still. So that storm was a very severe storm. And then number three, three, we see the silencing of the storm. Now I'm, I'm just using my imagination, which I've got a very vivid imagination. Like I tell you, I, you know, I imagined all kinds of things when I was a kid. I had an imaginary friend that I imagined, and I, you know, I used my imaginary friend, and, and me and him done all kinds together. And he, even sometimes in my imagination, he would get mad at me and go play with somebody else. Now, that's bad, ain't it? So I've got an imagination. So I begin to uh, imagine how it must have been in that storm and I can imagine the, the, the thunder sounding and the lightning flashing and I can imagine the wind howling and, and, all, and how terrifying that must have been. But Jesus, even though that outrageous storm, with his voice, he calmed it. 
with his voice, he's silent. The storm. You know, you know, if you listen to the devil, he'll have your ear all the time. If you lend the devil your ear, listen to me, he will speak to you all that you'll listen to. Sometimes the devil gets on your head. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what, what the devil whispers in my ear sometimes. They don't nobody like you. The devil comes and say, oh, you ain't, you ain't never going to amount to nothing. I want to tell you something. Little is much when God's in it. And, I, and, and when the devil comes, sometimes I think, you know, the devil's right. And I don't claim to be anything but saved by the grace of God. But the devil will tell you everything. He'll tell you how your family, family don't love you. They don't nobody care about you. And if I listen to all that mess long enough, you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get down in the dumps. I'm going to have to watch my step or I'm going to step on my bottom lip. And I get down in the dumps and I'll get depressed and I'll get dejected. Because here come, here's come the old devil, and I've lent him my ear, and I've listened to what he's got. Let me remind you who the devil is. He's a liar. He don't tell the truth. He can't, you know, even if he tells any amount of truth, it's by some way to deceive you. If there's any element of truth in him, it's for his benefit to deceive you or, or to make you feel bad or to make you feel useless. I'll tell you, there's not a, a saved person in this building this morning that God cannot use and that God will use if you'll just let him use you. I don't care what you've done, who you are, what situation you've been in in life. If you're willing to be used of God, God can use you. And God will bless you. I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm tired of this bunch that runs around today and says, well, God can't use that one because they've done this in their life. Hey, when I got saved, I got my sins under the blood. Amen. When I got right with God, I got my sins under the blood. And no matter what's going on in my past, amen, God can use me if I'll just yield myself to him. So don't listen to the devil. Don't lend him your ear when, when he's trying to cause you to, uh, you know, to be in doubt or to be in fear. Amen. Don't lend him your ear. Just go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Father, help me. Jesus, help me. I'm in a storm and it's raging. And let God deal with the devil. Because the devil's already beat. Now he's fighting and he'll fight to the very end and then he'll go into he'll go uh, into hell for a thousand years into the bottom of his pit for a thousand years and he ain't going to give up when he gets out of there. He's going to fight again and then God's going to put him in, the place, in his place in the lake of fire for eternity. But friend, he's not going to give up. Don't you give up on God. Believe me, friend, tonight. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and God will give the victory in our storm. Last of all, we see the Savior in the storm. Even though we, some, you know, that the Jesus was asleep because he was tired physically, he was wore out, and he was slumbering away. Now, have you listen? I've been here, so I know you have. But you remember some time when you've been in a battle, been in a storm, and you cry out to God, and God don't say that. I mean, you, you can't hear from God. You, you, you really listen, and there's a, a, a kind of a funny in our church bulletin. You read it. People say, I've been praying. I've been calling on you, Lord, and why haven't you answered? He said, I've been answering, but why ain't you been listening? But sometimes you've been listening, and you've been waiting, and you've been agonizing before God. Oh, God, help my youngins. Oh, God, help my family. Oh, God, heal this person. Dear Jesus, will you help me, Lord? I need your help. And you get up, and you feel like your prayers has not went anywhere. So you begin to check up, Lord. There ain't no sin in my life. And you said if I call on you, you'd hear me. And God seems like it's silent. A very well-known preacher in our area one time said that he hadn't heard, and I believe him. He said, I've not heard from the Lord in over seven years. But he's one of the greatest preachers that I've ever known. He, you know what he done? He knew God was there. God was being silent toward him, but he knew God was there, and he knew he was in the will of God, and God was still helping him preach, but he just hadn't heard from him. Sometimes, friend, it seems like we don't hear from the Lord. But you got to see that God's still working. You got to know, even though you can't always hear it, 
even though sometimes you don't even feel it, thank God you know by faith that God's still working, God's still moving. I've been told before by, you know, by people that they didn't even feel saved. I've been there a few times myself. I don't feel like I'm saved. But again, I've done what the Bible says. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and I have been saved by the grace of God and I don't listen to the devil when he comes with his lies trying to tell me that because I've done what the Bible said. I've confessed. I believe by faith in him. I've done what the Bible says. Friend, I'll tell you, when Jesus is in the storm, when we see the Savior in the storm, even though we may think sometimes He's asleep and not hearing us, by faith you know that God is listening and God is hearing and that if you'll stay with the Lord, He'll answer your prayer. He'll meet your need. He'll do that in His own time. Part of the problem is He's not asleep. But we're in a hurry. God ne God's never in a hurry. God's never late. But he's never in a hurry. You know, they accused Jesus when he raised Lazarus from the dead. They, they accused him of being late because they asked him days earlier. And he they accused him of being late. No. He wasn't late. He did that, that there might be a manifestation of the power of God. He did that for a reason. Listen, God's always got a reason for his time and what he does when he does it. And so, friend, today, if you're going through a storm, Maybe you're about ready to bail out of the ship. Maybe you're about ready to give up. I want to tell you something today. You stay with the Lord. He'll come through. In God's time, He'll come through. He'll see you through this storm that you're facing. And I can, I can attest to that not only through the Word of God, because I believe it, because of all things that have happened in my life that I thought it was just never going to, nothing's ever going to happen. But in God's time, God comes through. God bless you. Even though we might think that he's asleep, he knows our need. Jesus knows what we need. Jesus knows our fear. Jesus knows the storm we're facing. If you're facing a storm today, remember, Jesus is with you. And a final thought, I'd rather be out, I'd rather be in a boat with Jesus than out on my own in the water. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat with the Lord. If you're facing a battle, remember God's greater than your storm. And you've heard the song made or the saying that the next time the devil tells you how big your storm is, you remind the devil how big your God is. And friend, God will help you in your storm. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. Lord, we thank you for your help. Lord, it seems like, Father, we've tried our best, Lord, to help this morning. Through the word of God, I pray, dear Jesus, God, that whoever's here this morning that's in need of this message, God, that they'll respond to thee today and let you, Lord, help them. If there's somebody here this morning that's about ready to get out of the boat and quit, Lord, remember, there's no help out of the boat. You've got to stay in the boat with the Lord. Lord, and I pray, God, you bless. Lord, help us now. If there's someone here that's lost and don't know you, I pray that you'd save them. In Jesus' name, amen. Every head bowed, no one.